there, yarn lovers. It's Gary, and I'm coming to you from my happy place, the Yarn Corner here on Vancouver Island in Canada. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Today is Thursday, October the 27th, 2022, and this is video number 161. So how are you all doing? I hope you're well and staying safe. I have to apologize. I had a bit of a chuckle in my last podcast that I uploaded number 160, which was a week ago. I was getting all my dates wrong. I believe I introed with 2021 and then I was talking about a purchase from Little Knits when I was backtracking in time and then I was mentioning July of 2020. Those two references should be 2022. I, I don't know what happened. I was just beside myself with not knowing what the date was. Anyway, I want to thank all the commenters from the last video where I was mentioning all of the purchases that I made from Little Knits and people who commented on what they have made with their items that they recognized from the, um, the reveal that I did of all the orders. Also, I want to say thank you for the comments on the haircut. Yes, it was well and truly needed. I went to the hair salon here and I booked an appointment and when they were chopping off the hair when it finished I had to do a big step over a clump of hair so it was definitely well needed. Uh, for those people who are just joining this is not a podcast about haircuts it is a podcast that I've set up to talk about all of my yarny adventures that's in knit crochet dyeing of yarn acquisition so if that kind of thing is of interest to you please stick around generally I talk about my finished objects my works in progress my dream minks and later in the episode I do talk about catching up on what I've been up to in this small community me and my husband Chad have moved into before I get started talking about my finished work and my works in progress I want to talk about what Hank and I are wearing Hank up here is wearing a scarf that I cranked out on my Addy Express knitting machine and I had some healthy size leftovers of cakes that I cracked into to create hats and I thought I'm going to use up these in panels of 30 rounds and then switch them up and add striping in to use up these cakes. And here you can see Premier's spun colours in the colourway Agate. Up here is another Premier uh, collection called coffee shops in in the colorway turquoise and the last thing that I added here which you can see a little bit of is lion brands ferris wheel in the colorway enchanted garden I believe I'm wearing a two color rib slip stitch sweater and it's in the raglan style construction it doesn't come from a pattern I just know how to do the raglan style and I used in this sweater the turquoise color is Serendipity Tweed by Brown Sheep Company and the colorway is called Raindrop. The contrasting color here is from Lime Brand and it is their comfy cotton blend in the colorway called Driftwood. Now a word of caution when you're using the Serendipity Tweed by Brown Sheep Company, I don't know whether it's just this colorway or whether the lot that I had was uh, saturated with dye, but when I washed this jumper because I've washed it twice. I've been wearing it a lot since the three weeks ago it came off my needles and uh, it did bleed. So the first uh, wash was a lot of the colour came out uh, affecting the colour that I blended it with and the second time was a little less. I think the third time it might be all out but just to give you a word of caution if you are to use this particular yarn in colour work that do a swatch, give it a soak, see if anything bleeds because if you want your colour to be crispy and well defined then I would suggest that those are good measures to take with the Brown Sheep Company's Serendipity Tweed. Moving right along I'm going to be showcasing my finished work of the week. Here it is here. Da -da -da -da. It is the Festive Dragon Wrap. Now this has a bit of a story to it. Two years ago I did the Festive Dragon Chevron scarf and it was just the one chevron with these reversible ridges on each side and I thought I'm going to do a 2.0 and tell a little bit more of a story to the dragon and I found this arcade stitch in a stitch dictionary that I use and it rem reminded me a lot of 
scales on a dragon or a reptile and I thought this would work wonders and I absolutely love it. It is a bit of a yarn eater. So this is around eight feet long and around on the shorter side here, it is around 24 inches in depth and enough to wrap around and keep snugly warm. And it's quite a heavy, I'm gonna say it's probably around mm, five, 500 grams. 500 grams of yarn is in here. So yeah, I haven't blocked it yet. So it may grow a little more as these uh, stitches here are a bit bouncy. And I think with blocking and stretching, it might actually uh, get a little deeper than 24 inches. So yeah, the color choices that I made were inspired by Setter's Calendar Cow for 2022. And the month of June, oh my God, the month of June was celebrating a podcaster called Yarn Joy Podcast. And I believe that's Terry. So she, she had a photo that she submitted and it was a field of lavender with green grass and a, a sandy path at the top. So I'm doing the colors in here inspired by the photograph where I have some smoky lavender and some green. The sa sandy path at the top is more of a beige color, but I lo love this yarn so much I wanted to try it out. I did like the washed look. So this is a little bit of a stretch of the path. Mine is more of a stony kind of marbly type looking path. And I love the antique feel, the look of it looks a bit weathered and that's kind of where I'm at right now with my uh, coloring and styling. I love the weathered look. So let's take a look at what I use for yarn as well as hook size. Okay. The chevron part was a wool yarn and it's from Malabrigo. The colorway is called 416 Intercita and the collection is Rustita. So it is a single ply yarn it's around a three weight, so a light DK, and I used one whole hank of it in the chevron. So that is uh, 285 meters. Really, really nice and soft, little sticky. And the second yarn that I used in that marbly type uh, arcade stitch was this one here called Alaray, and it's 100% cotton called Sun Kissed Speckled. The colorway of this one is called Seashell. And again, this is a three light or a DK weight yarn. I used two different hook sizes for the festive dragon wrap. For the Malabrigo, which is the wool that I had in the chevron bit, I used the Fells hook here in the size five millimeter. This was generously gifted to me by Karen Miller. I love this hook so much. Thanks, Karen. It is quite a sleek, hook which has a great design for slipping in and out of different recesses and, and stitches and as you can tell there is a deep recess there for the yarn to fall into. I had to accentuate my hand movements to capture and release the yarn but after my rhythm was uh, kind of worked out it was a lovely hook to use. I did go down a size in needle for the for the cotton because I found that with the furls hook, the cotton was, uh, the stitch work was getting a bit too loose and lazy looking because I am a, um, a loose crocheter. So I went with a Susan Bates with a smaller recess and I could actually work a lot quicker with uh, this type of, of, of hook. And it has this really nice warm to touch. Um, it has a, wooden handle. So I really enjoyed working with that too. I wanted to also touch base on the, the pattern that I'm writing up to share amongst my friends regarding the festive dragon wrap that you've just seen. And I am working my way through it. I'm feeling a little bit more confident in it now. Now this is not a pattern that's going to be released uh, to be on sale. It's just I want to share amongst my friends here in the yarn community. And this is by no means to say that 
all of the numbers are worked out mathematically. There are a lot of fudging going on here. <laughs> and I invite my friends to fudge along with it if they find anything that needs fixing. Uh, yeah, you can let me know, but it's just basically so that if anyone wants to try it out, they can. So I got the two pages here, which were the Chevron bit. And I just wrote up the one page here right now of the lace work, which makes it an equal playing field. And I've written in yellow there, the start of the, the arcade stitch. So I'm gonna test it out. That's why it's yellow and see what it's all about, whether I can actually understand it. And it's almost done. So I'll just keep continuing on with that and trying it out. And when I feel that it's done, I will uh, put it up and you can link into it and download it and try it to your heart's content. Moving right along, I'm gonna be catching you up on some works in progress. These you've seen in previous podcasts, but I'm just gonna be updating you on where I'm at. And the first one here is a knitted pattern called Murano Squares Boomerang, and it is a shawl style pattern. It is by Stitch Nerd Designs. I absolutely love this pattern. It was a gift by Jane, so thank you, Jane. You can use any yarn size, any two colors that you wanna use, as long as they're the same yarn size. So I am using a solid and a variegated. So let's take a look at the yarn. This one here is from a gift as well from my Australian friends, Justin and Simone. And it is from Bendigo Woolen Mills. It's called Rustic Mustard. And that's the details there, should you like to know. It is a, hmm, they classifying it as a DK. I think it's a little thicker, just at a guess. It's probably a thicker three weight yarn. And I'm also pairing it with a yarn that I got from my good friend Crystal over at Bag A Day. I love this yarn. It is one of my favorite brands of yarn. It's called Noro. And where's the yarn? Oh, here we go. On the ground here, fell on the floor. It is World of Nature by Noro. And it is in the colorway called, number is 1072. And should you want to know the collection name, that's it. Down there, I don't know the pronunciation of that, but I love how it variegates from all of these autumny and smoky colors. So let's take a look at where I'm at. And this is the style of the type of shawl that it's making up. I believe I was probably around here somewhere in the last time I showed you. So I've done a good five more inches on it and it is slowly growing so I'm gonna have to up my needle uh, length sometime very soon but I'm gonna go until I finish the mustard color and I might have to use a couple of balls of that Noro to compensate for the yardage or the meterage of the mustard color so I'm gonna keep going but I love it I love how it's creating these little squares and checkers and you can really get that sense of the contrast between all the variegated colors and that nice dark color here. So it, got, it does fade in and out of the contrast, giving that really nice, interesting texture. The other side, if you're interested in seeing it, is it's a little bit of the floats that are showing up. It has an interesting texture on its own, not as nice as the front, obviously, but it does, uh, it does sit nice and flat. And both of these yarns are a little woolly. I don't mind that, um, the woolly texture of it. And when, it, when I wash it up, I'm sure that they will probably soften up as well. So that's the front again. I absolutely love it. Yeah, it's addictive, the pattern, um, really calls out to me to keep going and trying the next and see what happens with the next color that comes out of the Noro and mixes up with that mustard color. So it does call to me and I really want to knit on it. Uh, the next thing that I've got to show you is a bit of a spoiler on a Stephen West make-along that I'm doing. It's the 2022 Twists and Turns. 
I know that there is the four clues out now today, the last clue was released, but for those people who are still building it or working through it, I have gotten myself, I'm going to say maybe a quarter of the way through clue two. And if you want to keep it a secret or a surprise, please turn away and I'll show you where I'm at with my first part of clue two. I've fallen way behind, but I'm embracing my pace. And here it is here. So I finished, I think last time I showed you, I was halfway through the chevrons and I still had, um, there are repeats to do a number of repeats. And I think I was only halfway through the repeats, but now I'm done. And I braided in all of these uh, loose bits that uh, Stephen had us bind off in between the chevrons. And I'm up to my accent color and my little wing here for clue number two. And there's a lot to do in clue number two. So I'm going to be, I think, stuck on this for maybe another two weeks. Uh, but I love how the choices of color, the accent color is coming through. I'll just show up close. So you can see the type of texture that's in there. So I'll show you what I got with my color choices. And these are all gifts. I really wanted to do a bit of a gift shawl uh, with yarn that was given to me. Okay, so my main color here is this color here. Has a bit of a shine to it. Really lovely twist. And this is the West Yorkshire Spinners Exquisite Yarn. And the colorway is called Bayswater. So this is how much I have left on my full hank. And I'm going to say I probably will use up all of this one in the one and a half wings that I've got the accent color going through. And then I might have to crack into the second hank. The contrast color or color B is this one here and this is Madeline Tosh it's just simply called Tosh and it is in the colorway Herbology it's also a, a single ply and I love the mix of color how it changes from this jade and then it has bits of speckle of like a warm yellow and green in there as well, which relates to my highlight color or my accent color. These two yarns here were generously gifted to me by Crystal over a bag a day. Oh my God, Crystal, thank you so much. You just spoiled me rotten. And my accent color, which I just started using is this highlighter green. I absolutely love this green. It is Vitalana from Knit Crate and it is called Walking Dead, the colorway. I absolutely love this colorway. And this is from my, my friend Penny Bolton. I love it so much. So the needles that I'm using, I believe is a 3.5. It's a 3.5 millimeter. And I'm using my Chagu stainless steel. I'm really enjoying it. I'm learning a lot. Right now, I just learned how to do the uh, twisted rib stitch and that was very very interesting I enjoyed that very much and a ton of short rows now I've done short rows before so I liked the short row breathe it breathable sections because I didn't really have to look so intently at my stitch count or what I was doing with a stitch it was just plain garter so that was a lot of fun next up are some dream knits and crochet patterns that I'm either going to be uh, embarking on and some yarn choices that I've made. Now, uh, this is just my brain thinking ahead of the game. And I thought this is a nice time to actually talk about my wishes and my dream patterns that I'll be working on in the future. And I thought I'd take you on the journey of some of these ideas as well. I did show you in the last uh, couple of podcasts ago on a dream selection of yarn that I have called the Croft and it it uh, was for a sweater hoodie vest and I want to do cables that look like this 
I don't know whether you can see that. It's um, got the hoodie up here and it'll have a Celtic braid in the middle and then these braids on either side and the hood in the back will have these antler, antler cables that runs up and around over the hood. So I've got some ideas going on for the, the craft yarn that I have and how rustic it is. I think those stitches would look amazing with that yarn. And for my dream crochet, I've got some yarn and I've picked out the pattern. I found this designer online on an Etsy store through Reggie at J Hook Crochet. She's done many of her designs and these are all shawls, like bohemian shawls. I absolutely love the designer. Her name is Claudia Ramprich. I'm sure I'm pronouncing that wrong and I do apologize, Claudia, but this is the design that I chose uh, for starting next when I get the chance. And it's called the Triangular Scarf by, uh, and then it's Lucone. Lucone. <laughs> I'm sure that's not how you pronounce it. So I decided to grab this vegan cake here from Stanley and there's enough yardage there to create the pattern. So those are the colors. It's gonna go from a gelati green to more of a minty color, and then going to orange red and this Superman blue. So really like those colors. And I think that'll look very bohemian chic. So yeah, can't wait to do that one. Those are my dream knits and crochet for the next little while. So if you're just here for the yarny goodness, I just want to say thank you for sticking around this long and joining in on all the fun. I'm going to be shifting gears and talking about what I've been up to in the community. And if you want to stick around, you're more than welcome to. So catching you up on what I've been up to here in the community, me and my husband have moved into about a year ago. I can't believe that September was a full year. How time flies. Two weeks ago, we jumped in the car, we drove up to a place called Campbell River, and we wanted to try out some fish and chips there. We've heard so many good reports about different fish and chips that are supplied up in this little community. And we found a shack along a boardwalk called Dockside Fish and Chips, and we ordered Red Snapper and our bucket of, of chips to go with it. We found a lovely park bench. The sun was really nice and warm. And we watched the, there was like a fish run going up and they were looking to get up river to spawn. But I think the weather has been not uh, in their favor. So all the creeks and all the rivers are quite low and they can't get into their regular areas where they spawn. So they've just sort of pulled around the Campbell River area between Tuxedo Island and Campbell River. So there was a lot of activity going on. There were sea lions, there were birds, and lucky for us, we actually saw a couple of whales breaching there. We don't know whether they were humpback whales or gray whales, but beautiful, uh, the spout, the noise that they make when they come up for air, and uh, it's uh, so powerful and moving. And we're just sitting there eating our fish and chips, watching all of this display in front of us. I do have some footage that I will share with you, but it's not of the whales, unfortunately. I didn't have enough uh, like clean hands to get my, uh, my camera out to take photos of it. And in an instant, they were gone. They were underwater again and they did not come back up. But I do have uh, footage of the dock that we walked along and some of the beautiful footage of that day we were in Campbell River. Then last weekend, not so nice. It's turned and it's getting gray and wet right now. So thankfully those fish might get some water so that they can get upstream and, and get to their uh, places where they spawn. And we went to a hatchery, a fish hatchery close by us. And it's uh, it displays in a lovely walk along the area where all the fish uh, they breed them, they kind of grow them, and then they uh, take, they release them, and then they also take them back in because they've learnt now to go back to the hatchery to spawn. And so we went there, and it was at the time when they were coming back, and all the fish were 
decaying and they were kind of like getting ready to spawn and it would be the end of their life cycle. Um, so we, we really enjoyed going around looking at this hatchery and finding out a bit more about the life cycle of salmon. Um, so yeah, I've got some footage of that as well. I hope that you'll enjoy. And I think that catches you up on what we've been up to. There's been a couple of house guests again come and visit. We have another one as of tomorrow. She, uh, she'll be staying with us for a couple of nights. And that's why I'm kind of eager to get this recording done and finished uh, in on Thursday night. And hopefully when I can escape for a, an hour or something, I can get this uploaded by the weekend. So that brings us up to what I've been watching on TV and what suggestions I can make if you're stitching away and you want to watch something. This is a series. We're in season four right now. It's just concluded and it is on Netflix in Canada. It's called Sinner and the actor in the Sinner series that we watched season four is Bill Pullman and Jessica Hetch. I don't know whether I pronounce her name correctly. Uh, so those are the main characters that I've strung in from all the other seasons. And it is about a detective who has come off of season three in doing a serious uh, criminal, has investigated a, a crime there by a serious criminal. And uh, so there is a little bit of aftermath and uncertainty on what his you know plans are for his career so he moves to an island on the east coast somewhere of the united states and they're having a bit of downtime uh he's a character his name is called harry ambrose in the series and he's learning how to kind of like relax and it's not working out really well for him because he's he's a an investigator uh through and through so he sees something that happens on the island and it's the story about how he wants to uncover the mysteries uh, centered around a uh, suicide. And uh, it leads him to understand some intricate uh, dynamics in families that live on the island and bad business deals that are uncovered. Uh, so there's a lot of leads into who had done it or who was the cause of uh of this suicide that happened and yeah so it's a very interesting i'm gonna say it's like eight episodes and each one is around 45 minutes to 50 minutes and i really enjoyed it it was it was good the dialogue was great the cinematography was beautiful in that part of the world and yeah i would suggest that if you're into sort of crime investigating kind of stories then this one might be for you. If you've watched it before and you also enjoyed it or didn't enjoy it, let me know what you thought of Sinner Season 4. Uh, with that, I think that catches you up on everything that I needed to share with you this week and I hope that you are having a great week and weekend to come and I will see you in the next podcast. Bye for now.